Hi everyone, welcome to the first day of our virtual workshop on health information exchange standards. This workshop is actually delivered as part of our certificate in health terminology standards program. Uh, and in particular, it's for the third course of that program, HIMP 537 on health information exchange standards. So if you're joining this uh, workshop and you're interested in joining the certificate program uh, in health terminology standards then there's still time to apply for this year's September intake so if you're interested please go to the UVic uh, HIMF certificate site or scan this code um, and submit your applications by June the 1st. So as I said um, today is the first day of our three-day virtual workshop on health information exchange. Uh, my name is Linda Bird and I'm the instructor of HIMP 537. Um, today's workshop um, runs for four hours and for the first two and a half hours we're pleased to have uh, some wonderful um, guest speakers from across Canada. Uh, and the last one and a half hours is just for our HIMP 537 students, where we'll be walking through a range of hands-on activities to consolidate uh, what we've learned for the day. So here's the agenda for today's workshop. Um, there are two main focuses for today. The first is standards from the Canadian Institute for Health Information, or CAIHI. Uh, and the first three presentations will be from guest speakers from CAIHI. Uh, and the second theme for today is social determinants of health, which is the topic of our fourth presentation by Alex Singer. Uh, and for the students of 537, uh, they will stay on the line for some hands-on activities on um, developing um, some FIRE questionnaires using uh, social determinants of health. So for those, uh, they will have that activity as well. But let's get started now. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce our first speaker, Anne Forsyth, who is the Manager of Data Standards at KaiHai, and she'll be presenting on KaiHai Standards 101, A Path to Interoperability. So over to you, Anne. I will stop sharing and allow Thank you to you. pick up the screen. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Linda. Hello, everybody. Um, just give me a minute to switch over my screen. Just want to confirm that everyone can see the full slide as my screen good. share. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I believe I have about 45 minutes to take us through a quick uh, standards 101. Um, so we're just going to start off today with uh, a land acknowledgement. Um, so we find ourselves connecting remotely from across the nation. And Kaihai would like to collectively acknowledge the lands that we all occupy, whether treaty or unceded. So I'll start off by giving you a quick blurb about the Canadian Institute for Health Information, um, also known as Kaihai, and some people still call it CIHI, um, but Kaihai is just easier to say. And this will save my co-presenters from having to do the same spiel. So taking one for the team. Um, so we are an independent, not-for-profit organization that provides essential information on Canada's health systems. Uh, we were established in 1994, and we work very closely with our federal, provincial, and territorial partners and stakeholders to gather, package, and disseminate information that informs policy, management, care, and research, uh, leading to a better and more equitable uh, healthcare system and health outcomes for all Canadians. Uh, we are led by a 16-person board of directors, and we do have representation on that board from across the country. So this is our uh, mandate, vision, and values. If you're interested, our full strategic plan is on our website. Um, the, um, essentially, the mandate is that we deliver comparable and actionable information to accelerate improvements in healthcare, health system performance, and population health across the continuum of care. Um, and we wanted to highlight that in our values with our um, just recently renewed strategic plan, we have included inclusion, uh, which updates our previous value of respect. Um, and that the in intent there is to broaden our, um, the, our focus on this topic. So we have three goals um, that'll take us from 2022 to 2027. Uh, the first is a comprehensive and integrated approach to Canada's health system data. 
The second is an expanded offering of health of analytics indicators and tools to support health system decision making. And the last is health information users who are better equipped and enabled to do their jobs. Um, so again, I won't read all of these, um, but if you are interested, we have a much more detailed plan on our website, which is kaihai.ca. Um, so we do host extensive data uh, from across the healthcare Canadian, uh, across the Canadian healthcare continuum um, at Kaihai. So we have data on different types of care, including hospital and emergency, mental health, home care, long-term care, et cetera, uh, patient reported data, health spending data, and health workforce data. Uh, we hold all of this data in what we call data holdings. Uh, we have about 28 of them. Um, in total, we have about 10 billion records that we manage, three terabytes of unique records and pan-Canadian coverage. Um, and we, we do have linkable data across these data holdings that enable us to um, build things like population groupers that allow us to, to publish indicators and uh, report on the, the state of our healthcare system. Um, and I believe I covered the fact that we get this data from lots of different sources, including directly from health delivery organizations like hospitals, um, as well as from regional health authorities, uh, provinces and territories, um, so across the, the entire spectrum. Okay, so let's get into the meat of why I'm here, uh, Data Standards 101. Uh, we're going to go through a number of different topics today, and I'm going to try to keep my eye on the clock because you um, can easily talk about this for hours. Um, so we'll cover what health data standards are in general, um, what the different types of health data standards are, uh, what the development methodology lifecycle is for these standards, um, what interoperability is and how data standards relate to it. Um, we'll do a case study of interoperability and health data standards in action. And, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about barriers and um, why we're not completely there yet and where, in terms of where we want to be with interoperability. And I'll wrap it up with a summary before I turn it over to my colleagues. So what are health data standards? Um, they are agreed upon documented ways of defining health related concepts and patient information. They should be computable, understandable, replicable, reusable and interoperable and they can contain technical specifications or precise criteria that's used to um, that's used consistently as a rule, guideline, or a definition. We need health data standards across the entire healthcare system uh, where data is generated and used. Um, so the implementation of health data standards produces information that can be used by clients and families to engage in care planning. So this is our first um, what we call our mason jars. It's our first jar of person health. Um, it can be used by clinicians and care teams to inform and manage care provision, also falling within this first mason jar. Um, it can be used by care or by organizations to inform quality initiatives and the management of resources, and this is to drive continuous improvement efforts within care delivery organizations. Uh, it can be used by health system planners uh, for the healthcare system to inform things like resource allocation, benchmarking, and health outcomes. Um, and that's used by planners and policymakers, and then largely by people and communities for population and public health uh, purposes. So the, uh, the information that's generated as a result of standards is um, critical to our healthcare system and the effective management of it. Um, so standards essentially enable stakeholders to do things like uh, data linkage, comparability across different sources over time, um, ensure quality information, facilitate the design of data collection tools, um, and ideally reduce costs. Um, and uh, in terms of the results that we can see coming out of standardized information, we can obtain comparable multi-sectoral disaggregated performance indicators, create and adjust policy that's a a bit more tailored and more effective to our, our system and to the people who use it um, and provide high quality and equitable care that improve patient experiences and outcomes. So what are the different types of health data standards? There's of course many different uh, breakdowns of this very generic term. Um, so this is kind of the, the slide that we use to, to try to simplify or summarize the five main categories of health data standards. 
Um, so we have content standards, um, which is in the first bucket here. And this is data required to produce the information. Um, so we have standards for things like clinical care, administrative data, for population data, population health, um, social determinants of health. We then have code systems. So these are structured terms or codes that represent related concepts. Um, and there are things like classification systems or terminology systems. And some examples are ICD-10-CA, CCI, and uh, SNOMED-CTCA. We also have um, information standards. So this is more about um, the information that the health systems require. So these are standards for indicators and methodologies for reporting purposes. So you can think of the first two as more for the data collection uh, and this middle one for use of the data. Um, so some examples are uh, standards for indicators that define quality, safety, access, uh, population health, patient experiences. Um, and then we have uh, standards that enable the exchange of information. So this is a key part of interoperability. Um, and this is uh, these define requirements for how that data will flow. And that this is what allows the information to move seamlessly between systems and devices. So some examples are uh, the HL7 standards and the different versions of it. And lastly, we have uh, privacy and security standards that set out the requirements for privacy and data protection. So um, there are a number of different organizations at the pan-Canadian level um, that have a role to play in health data standards. Um, KaiHai focuses mainly on the data content standards for health system use. Um, so we collect data using these content standards for, 28, for our 28 data holdings. Um, and those were the first two buckets on the previous slide. So the content standards and the code systems go hand in hand. Um, InfoA tends to focus more on the data and exchange standards. Um, they do a little bit on the code system side as well. Um, and I believe you'll be hearing from them extensively on this tomorrow, so we won't, we won't get into that too much. Um, and lastly, StatsCan or Statistics Canada does uh, focuses on standards for data on vital stats, population health. Um, they're kind of um, standards for beyond healthcare for, for managing um, are reporting on multiple different sectors and industries. Um, and beyond just Canada, there are collaborators across the healthcare system um, within Canada and internationally that have a role to play in the standard space. Um, so it's very complex, um, but it also means that there are a lot of people who are out there who are very passionate about data standards. Um, so there's a lot of good work happening uh, across the globe. Um, so what is the development methodology lifecycle for a health data standard? How do we come up with these things? Um, and again, I'm going to be focusing on those data content standards and uh, the methodology that KaiHai uses to develop its standards. So we have a five-step process. Um, the first is identifying a system need. The second is consulting at a pan-Canadian level. The third is developing and implementing the standard. And the fourth is publishing. And the fifth is supporting uptake. Um, but the key thing to note here are all of our circular arrows. Um, so all of these steps can happen in an iterative way and should happen in an iterative way. Um, so it's not necessarily a rigid, you do step one and then step two and then three. Um, there's kind of constant evolution and refinement as you're building a standard. So let's go through these in a bit more detail. Um, so when we identify a system need or do periodic evaluation, uh, this is when we're determining new standards or modifications to existing standards that are needed to support emerging priorities. Um, so an example is um, equity and social determinants of health data, something that has been, um, has a spotlight on it right now in terms of needing more standardized data around it. Um, and then we also do periodic evaluation of existing standards to make sure that they're still relevant. Um, consulting at a pan-Canadian level, so this step is really crucial. Um, we cannot do our work in isolation. Um, we need the experts at the table to help us develop our standards. So we do lots and lots of consultations with federal level organizations, provinces and territories, the clinicians who are actually uh, generating the data, the researchers who are going to use it. 
um, the health delivery organizations, expert working groups, uh, professional associations, patients, communities, um, and also international groups to make sure we're staying aligned with international interoperable standards. Um, so there's lots of moving parts, lots of considerations to keep in mind as you're developing a standard. It's, it's definitely a complex thing and you will hear our primary healthcare uh, experience on that uh, shortly. The third step is the development and implementation step. Um, so in collaboration with our key partners that we described in the previous step, um, and based on their input, we develop a standard um, and implement it. So we define core data elements and their associated value sets and code systems. And these can vary slightly um, across care settings. Uh, so it's very important for us to have a, a mapping or have an understanding of where the variations are happening in order to enable linkage um, once we start getting that data in. Uh, the fourth step is publishing. So when a new or a modified standard is published, we, uh, we publish it with supporting documentation, which can include user manuals, data dictionaries, coding resources, training guides, um, whatever we can do to make that data collection um, process easier. And lastly, supporting uptake. Um, so provinces and territories or health delivery organizations like hospitals and vendors are provided with ongoing support to implement the standards um, and update their systems um, to make sure that they're on the, the latest version of the standard. Um, we also provide tools to build capacity and training, including on data literacy to uh, troubleshoot data submissions and support uh, conformance testing to enable that data flow. Okay, um, so now that we have a fulsome understanding of what health data standards are and data content standards specifically, so around the data collection, we're going to move a little bit into interoperability um, and we'll try and do this in a way that doesn't steal if always thunder tomorrow because I know that they'll have lots to tell you about in relation to in interoperability. Um, so interoperability is essentially um, the basic ability of systems and devices to exchange and interpret shared data. So for two systems to be interoperable, they have to be able to exchange data and subsequently present that data so it can be understood by a user. Um, so patients, as you know, see more than one provider and often return for multiple visits. And it's important that providers have an accurate picture of that patient's journey across that care continuum. Um, what's really key here is that in order to enable that, you need unambiguous communication. So everybody in that care continuum or that circle needs to understand what everybody else has done. Um, and really the only way to achieve that is through standards. So if the information follows the patient, it's available at the right time, at the right place and to the right people. Um, but that only has value if everyone is understanding that information in the same way. So um, there is no interoperability without standards. Um, as I said, InfoWay tends to focus on the data exchange piece and the interoperability piece, uh, and we partner very closely with them because we bring in the standards piece, and these two concepts have to go hand in hand in order for us to achieve what we want to achieve in, in the country in terms of being able to share data seamlessly and have it follow the, the patient. Um, so these clinical and administrative data standards, they provide the technical framework and the clinical language that enable thousands of healthcare providers to communicate and share information that's contextual and unambiguous. Um, and the Pan-Canadian standards that we put out support the safe and secure exchange, uh, us and NFOP put out, um, support the safe and secure exchange of healthcare information across the continuum of care. Um, so they're part, so standards are an important part of interoperability. And again, that's the ability for information to flow seamlessly between health systems, workflows, and solutions. So we're going to dive into a use case, and this is courtesy of one of our colleagues who is also presenting to you today. Um, this is a real life experience. Um, so there, there is an injured football player. He went to a hospital and he was identified into the, um, or sorry, he's identified or entered into the system with uh, the sociodemographic identifiers, examined by a physician, and had a number of x-rays uh, confirming a torn meniscus that, that he experienced. Uh, the physician provides a treatment plan, prescribes medication, 
and that prescription is electronically sent to a pharmacy. The pharmacist then electronically receives the prescription for the patient, checks for allergies, and fills that prescription. And then the patient has a follow-up uh, with their primary care health, their primary healthcare provider, and that uh, primary healthcare provider accesses the patient's X-ray results, see what sees what medication was prescribed at the hospital, and is able to e-refer a patient to a physiotherapist. That patient to a physiotherapist. And then when the, the patient goes to the physio, they, that person can then access the patient's x-ray results and begin therapy on the patient. So this is kind of the ideal state that we've just described to you. Um, and how do we enable that? Where do standards come into play? Um, so again, it's, it's all about speaking the same language. Uh, so if the same language um, code sets value systems uh, like SOMED CT are used to describe the health concepts captured for the patient, such as fine tear meniscus, uh, or the prescriptions that were provided, then these healthcare concepts can be shared using interoperable data exchange standards across the different systems. So there's the content and code systems piece, which again is the high high side, and then the data exchange standards that enables the sharing, which is where InfoWay would come in. Um, and then that information can follow the patient across the continuum as they go from provider to provider uh, without having that patient repeat their experience um, and everything that happened to them when they interacted with the healthcare system. So this really enables um, all of the providers to, to deliver higher quality care and spend less time trying to fit the puzzle pieces together and more time talking to the patient and treating the patient. So if we break it down a little bit more, um, on the left-hand side are the SNOMED, co SNOMED codes. Um, so the clinical information and the diagnostic imaging results are sent electronically using HL secure HL7 messages. And so you can think of those as electronic envelopes with the codes, like SNOMED codes inside. And that envelope contains a well-structured message that maintains the integrity of the data. And those are the message, messages that are sent electronically across all of these different systems, um, from the hospital to the pharmacist, to the primary care provider, to the physio. Um, and it's when that information is unpacked and sorted um, and stored that the exact clinical information is provided to the care providers uh, as they're seeing that patient and treating that patient. Okay, um, so now that we've talked all about the ideal state of what information flow could look like and what connected care could look like, um, and you have a good understanding of what standards are, um, let's talk a little bit about why we're not there yet as a country um, and what some of the barriers are to standardizing health data um, and enabling interoperability. Um, so there are many barriers. Uh, we've tried to kind of summarize as much as we can into four main categories. Um, this doesn't necessarily capture all of the complexity uh, that exists with the, with the barriers, but it gives you kind of um, the basics around uh, what, what's going on and why is it taking so long. Um, so the first is around jurisdictional readiness and funding models. Um, so as we know, these vary across the country. Uh, we don't really have one comprehensive healthcare system. We really have 13 separate healthcare systems um, that are managed individually by provinces and territories. Um, so that means that funding is not always managed in the same way. And so when a new standard is released, the business and clinical process changes that may be required for a jurisdiction to adopt it are not totally uniform. And so it takes a lot of uh, wrangling to, to get the jurisdictions to um, adopt a standard to get the health delivery organizations and the clinicians and all of the, the vendors, all of the players within a jurisdiction to, to also adopt and implement the standard. Um, so that's what we spend a lot of our time doing at Kaiha. Uh, and again, that's just, we've been focusing just on the health system use side of things, uh, reporting on how our healthcare system is doing as a whole. Um, we haven't even really scratched the surface of setting standards for clinical documentation um, and, and clinical care um, and the data standards around those. So that's the whole other set of challenges that comes with, with that. Um, in terms of infrastructure, the digital infrastructure to collect a lot of the information might not be in place. Um, so that's not to say that the technology doesn't exist. It absolutely does exist. And we've seen other countries 
um, do this successfully. Um, the uh, the issue is around the investment in the technology, uh, and it's not just the investment in the technology. It's in all of the resources to support that technology and do all of the change management and process development that goes with it. Um, and the other issue that we've seen a lot is that standards have been customized over time across and within jurisdictions to meet specific information needs. Um, so there might be similar standards that exist across the country, but not everyone is on the same standard for any given sector. Um, and a lot of this is because there is really no authoritative organization, or there hasn't been in the past, that has the uh, ability to enforce um, standards across the board, across the country. Um, and so vendors, as, as they do, need to respond to individual client needs. And if a client wants um, their system or their documenting certain information to be customized in a certain way, then the vendors will um, will comply with that. And it results in data not being represented uh, uniformly and consistently across the, the country. Um, and lastly, the, there is a lack of incentive for vendors to adopt and implement and Canadian standards. Um, so again, the incentives for vendors are driven by funding, and their funding comes uh, mostly from individual health delivery organizations or clinicians. Um, there, there isn't kind of funding that flows um, directly to vendors from a pan-Canadian organization or a province or territory necessarily to uh, require them to adopt the latest and greatest standard that's been set. So how do we overcome some of these barriers? Um, we're in a very exciting time right now. Um, if any of you have been following the news in the past few months, um, there's been a huge commitment uh, at the federal levels and the, the provincial and territorial levels uh, towards interoperability. Um, we're talking about it in healthcare like never before. Um, people who've never heard this word before now understand it, which is so exciting. Um, and there's a recognition around that coupling of interoperability and standards and how much they need to go hand in hand to make this work, make that use case work that we talked through. Um, and so, <coughs> excuse me, there has been funding allocated in the latest federal budget to interoperability, to data standards adoption. Um, and the, one of the key pieces to making all of that work and to uh, enabling that funding to flow is a partnership between InfoWay and KaiHai. Um, which we've been working on uh, for over a year now, and it's uh, we're we're now joint at the hip, um, and we're we're kind of taking different pieces of uh, of the puzzle to try to move the dial a little bit. So I'm not going to talk through all of the details on this slide because um, I know InfoWay will cover it extensively tomorrow and they um, are the ones who have built this and can do it justice. Um, the only thing that I will point out is um, the the joint uh, pieces are around our governance. Um, so we're establishing um, interoperability governance bodies, tables that will bring the provinces and territories together um, in one place on at one table to set priorities, to agree uh, and endorse standards. Um, and that's something that's never been done before in Canada and can really enable us to move this agenda forward. Um, the other thing that uh, we're doing and partnering on is uh, the data content and exchange standards. Uh, so we talked about how these two things go hand in hand. Um, so our two organizations are, are working very closely on that. Um, we haven't put the Kaihai logo in any of the other areas necessarily because um, InfoWay is taking the lead on these, but uh, things like the vendor activation program will have a huge impact on um, our standards and how they're adopted. Um, and so we're, we're working closely with InfoWay um, as they take the lead on that. Okay, so just to summarize, and I'm 15 minutes under, this is amazing. Um, we might have time for questions. Uh, so standards are the foundation for high-performing, patient-centric, and connected healthcare systems. Uh, they're necessary for data sharing, so for clinical information to flow with the patient across care sites and settings, uh, for access by patients and care providers, for data linkage and comparison across a, a wide variety of data sources to support performance evaluation, research, innovation, the delivery of better care, 
Um, all of this leads to the, the improved health systems and better patient outcomes. Um, so the ability to share health information consistently and effectively improves safety and quality, strengthens care coordination, um, and anticipates health system needs, increases efficiency and reduces costs, um, empowers patients and families and improves population health as a whole, um, enables robust public health registries, enables and supports best practices. Um, and these are really just scratching the surface on all of the benefits that come with um, the ability to share standardized health information consistently across the system. Okay, so 